Today we are going to talk about more exciting news about Unreal Engine 5, Blender, Substance Painter, Nvidia and much more. First of all we're going to start with Nanite in Unreal Engine 5. A 30 minute video explanation by a technical artist was the way Epic Games has chosen to announce the brand new Unreal Engine 5's visualized micro polygon geometry system called Nanite, which allows the rendering of millions of poly models and the video explains the aspects concerning this technology and what all Nanite users should know, including unwrapping, which is one of the most complex changes to the art pipeline and sharing some solutions to these related problems. Furthermore, they talked about Nanite's limitations and how it will affect traditional game asset pipelines. The next gen will look perfect when artists will choose to couple Nanite with all the new Unreal Engine 5 features. Next we are going to talk about Blender and Substance Painter that will support Nvidia Omniverse. Nvidia announced that it will include support for USD with Blender 3.0 which will make it possibly used with Nvidia's Omniverse ecosystem. A more advanced USD and material support, an experimental Blender Alpha 3.0 USD branch was revealed, which will be available soon for Blender users. Furthermore, a new Substance 3D plugin will enable Substance material support in Omniverse and it is made by a collaboration between Nvidia and Adobe. It will allow a direct adjustability of materials created in Substance Painter or imported to Substance 3D asset library in Omniverse. Also new Omniverse extension, Gamber's 3D image to car is coming out soon. As Nvidia announced, it uses AI to predict 3D geometry, textures and part segmentation labels based on a single image input to create a 3D model through an example of turning a single photo of a car into a 3D model that can drive around virtual scenes complete with realistic headlights, blinkers and wheels. Next we have an update of Bifrost for Maya. The new Bifrost for Maya has been announced by Autodesk recently, revealing new features including real-time tool feedback, which was designed to simplify the creation and delivery of complex simulations and custom effects, next to several other improvements including virtual sliders, faster loading, graphic simulations using fields and areas, better cloth performance and simulation stability and animation, and new cloth animation properties, the ability of writing and reading the Alembic integration, and many other features. Furthermore, we have a Corona 7 release for Cinema 4D. The latest Corona render update for Cinema 4D is out now. It has new features like material library with over 500 materials for artists ready to use. It also includes new physical materials with great realism including matte metalness, roughness or glossiness modes in addition to clear coat and sheen. And it is compatible with other software of course. The sky has now easier and faster aerial perspective which includes turbidity, altitude and horizon blur controls next to the ability to read open VDB files for fire and smoke simulations and many more updates. And as we said before there will be a live webinar on August 18th where they will discuss new features of release 7 both for 3ds Max and Cinema 4D. Next we have Dust Element VFX Asset Library. The new VFX asset library software Das Element is here. It was designed with the aim to help artists organize images, sequences and video files, providing you with a simple and easy way to organize chaotic folders. It was developed using an AI feature to automatically promote the process of tagging files that uses a machine learning model specifically trained for VFX elements. Dust Elements operates entirely offline, so you don't have to worry about security when it comes to NDA for feature films or TV shows. Next we have Instant Terra Houdini Bridge. Now you can connect Houdini to Instant Terra using the bridge developed by YC Lab, which will also be coming soon. To benefit from it, artists are invited to create a terrain in Instant Terra, then define the parameters to be exposed in Houdini, and they can later link the Instant Terra project with an Instant Terra node in Houdini, which is a simple process. Next, we're gonna talk about Hero Player, which is now free with Nuke. Hero Player provides you with the possibility to automatically connect shots to review across editorial, compositing and VFX which will make complex productions more efficient at a larger scale. You can play back shots or sequence and compare versions of renders quickly using Hero Player which will allow you to easily see your work in the context of a VFX timeline. 
it is on demand, so you can claim your free annual subscription of Hero Player with your Nook or Nook X license. Its integration with Nook family is seamless, giving you a faster and efficient experience, plus the potential to profit from the open color I.O. that allows you to easily achieve continuity between shots. The good thing is Nook Studio, Hero Player and Nook all have the same color management system which is open color I.O meaning your review sessions benefit from the same robust color system in Nook. It also can be connected to a shot manager of your choice using Python API to quickly generate timelines, build dailies, playlists, and more. Next, we have Affinity 1.1 update. The new Affinity has been released recently by Serif, with a completely re-engineered architecture for better performance. Even though this update had a few features, it stays the biggest performance update ever because it focused mainly on implementing some major optimizations, making a huge impact particularly on very large and complex documents, providing a remarkably smoother, faster workflow and outstanding speed increases. This update is for all users who are using Mac, Windows PC or iPad. We also have Rhino Nature release. The Rhino Nature with a non-destructive workflow is now out, facilitating changes with fully editable creations at any time. All changes will be automatically saved with a live update option. It has a lightweight viewport which provides the ability to big amounts of objects within the Rhino environment and viewing them smoothly without frame drop. You can filter out unnecessary things during the design or look development process using the smart ecosystem management. It has a unique distribution and a preset library with a built-in ready-to-go high-quality presets. And you can save your own presets and reuse them in upcoming projects. When it comes to integration, all users are on the verge of seamless experience with major render engines. By the way, if you like the content we create and you want us to create more with higher quality, you can support us on Patreon, a crowdfunding website that is used by thousands of creators around the world. I wanted to mention this just in case you like the content and you wanted to contribute to our continued progress and growth in bringing you the latest news, add-ons, courses, and the current developments in the world of computer graphics, in addition to your suggestions for future videos. I hope you found this news interesting. If you think we forgot something important that happened this week, let us know in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next one.